For centuries, humans have wondered about the possibilities of extraterrestrial life. The idea of aliens goes back to the first century AD and Lucian of Samosata's comedy, True History, in which Lucian visits the moon, finding it populated with aliens. These aliens are at war with the people of the sun over colonization of the morning star. Since Lucian's days, aliens have only become more and more pervasive in our consciousness. From War of the Worlds to 2001 A Space Odyssey to E.T. and countless other books, movies, and TV shows, aliens are everywhere we look. Except in reality. Why might this be? Statistically, it seems like our galaxy and universe should be filled with life. In our own solar system, there are several places that have at least some of the criteria needed for life, or at least come close. In our solar system alone, Venus, Earth, and Mars orbit in the habitable zone. The area that a planet could orbit its star and have liquid water exists on its surface. Discoveries of extremophile organisms here on Earth that can survive in temperatures from just above absolute zero to well over boiling and live in absolute darkness. Some organisms have been known to withstand exposure to the vacuum of space. This means that life could be found in many unlikely places. When we combine this knowledge and the fact that there are several bodies in our solar system that have liquid water, and therefore temperatures and conditions at least in some way similar to places on Earth, with the revelations brought forth from the Kepler mission that, contain, that the Milky Way galaxy contains upwards of 100 billion planets, NASA estimates, based on Kepler data, indicate between 17 and 40 billion Earth-sized planets in their star's habitable zone. Based on all this data, it seems our universe should be teeming with life. So where are they? This is the fundamental question posed by French physicist Enrico Fermi. Not only is there the possibility for many civilizations to exist, these civilizations could have been in existence for far longer than our own, giving them plenty of time to develop technologies far, far, far more advanced in comparison to ours. If these fantastically advanced societies did exist, many people believe we would be able to see evidence of them, perhaps in the form of stellar-scale constructs. The logic goes like this. A sufficiently advanced civilization would need all the energy it could possibly access from its home star. A theoretical stellar-scale construct called a Dyson Sphere, no relationship to the vacuum company, proposed by Freeman Dyson, would completely surround a star, harvesting all of its solar energy. If these existed, we would certainly notice its effects on a star spectrum. However, no evidence has been found thus far. Furthermore, it seems likely that a technologically advanced race would make an attempt to colonize and explore the galaxy and the universe. Given our current understanding of the laws of physics, the galaxy could be colonized in as little as 50 million years. This is according to a paper by mathematicians Drs. Thomas Hare and Andrew Hedman. 50 million years may seem like a very long time. To a single human life, it certainly is. Though on a cosmic scale, in a universe that has ex existed for 14 billion years, and a galaxy that has been around for 5 billion of those, 50 million years is a drop in the proverbial bucket. More than enough time to, for a sufficiently advanced and motivated civilization to accomplish galactic colonization. Yet despite the claims of the History Channel and nutjobs on Reddit, there is no convincing evidence that Earth or any body in our solar system has been visited, much less colonized by extraterrestrials. Besides looking for megastructures and spaceships to find ET humans, they are looking at radio waves. Say it I, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, employs radio telescopes in hopes of finding a signal that indicates an intelligent origin. Humans have sent several of these images, most notably to Arecibo message, a radio signal sent towards globular cluster M13, containing pictograms of Earth, the solar system, and human beings. However, to date, no such signals have been received from outside of Earth, and given the distance between Earth and M M13, it would take 50,000 years for Arecibo message to be received and for Earth to receive a response. As we'll hear in a few minutes, a lot can happen to a civilization in 50,000 years. So why has none of this been found? The most obvious explanation for this great silence is that human beings are the only civilization that exists in the universe. This explanation is not all that satisfying, however, not because of any existential fear of cosmic loneliness, but because it seems so terribly unlikely. 
As we discussed previously, between extremophiles, underground oceans, the 17 to 40 billion possible Earth-like worlds and orbits inside habitable zones of stars in our galaxy alone makes the idea that our civilization is alone seem highly improbable from a purely mathematical standpoint. Although it must be noted that since we have not yet found any life aside from our own to compare Earth to, there is no way to know for sure how likely life is. A sample group of one is hardly sufficient for statistical purposes. The idea that human beings are indeed alone in the universe brings us to the rather dismal Great Filter. The Great Filter looks at the development of life from microbe to galactic colonization based on nine criteria and that at least one of them must be highly unlikely and that this stage is probably later on the list. Number one, the right star system with organic compounds and a planet and planets that can harbor life. Two, reproductive molecules with RNA. Three, prokaryotic organisms. Four, archaeotic and eukaryotic single-celled life. Five, sexual reproduction. Six, multicellular life. Seven, Tool using animals. 8. Where we are now. 9. Colonization explosion. We can assume from observation of our solar system and others that the first criteria is relatively easy to achieve. There are lots of possible candidates in our own solar system. Mars, Europa, and Enceladus are examples. However, as the list goes on, the criteria become more, much more difficult to fill. There are countless single-celled organisms on Earth, but only a few species that use tools, and certainly only one that has reached a level of civilization at all comparable to our own. If this kind of decreasing likelihood with increasing complexity continues on to level 9 of the filter, it could be a solid explanation for the lack of intelligence in the universe and a fairly stark omen for humanity's future. The implications of the Great Filter could be interpreted in several ways. It could mean that no other c civilization arise, that some earlier step on the filter is particularly unlikely, and we are past the most difficult part of the filter. This would be good news for humanity. Another explanation of the Great Silence builds on the ideas of the Great Filter. This states that while there could be other civilizations in existence, they are too far away to be interacted with. These civilizations could have existed at one point, or even do right now, but they are likely to collapse before the colonization explosion, and the distances between us are so great that by the time communication could be attempted, the civilizations involved could have collapsed. Think about the Arecibo message. It was sent in 1974, but will not reach its target until the late 270th century, about A.D. 26,900. Assuming the signal is picked up by a civilization with the ability to reply, Earth would not receive that reply until the year 52,000. Think about all the civilizations that have risen and fallen in the last 4,000 years. Consider how life has changed from 2000 BC to 2014 AD. Now try to imagine what life and Earth will be like in 50,000 years. It's basically impossible. There's no guarantee that there will be anyone at all. We've only been really looking for extraterrestrial intelligence since the mid-1960s. Even then, we have a relatively small number of resources invested in the task. The SEDAI Institute, founded by Carl Sagan and Frank Drake, uses an array of radio telescopes to look for signatures and signals that would indicate that it was sent from an intelligent origin. But SEDAI has only been in existence since 1995. There's a lot more out there to, to analyze than we possibly could in 20 years. One final scenario. Maybe whoever is out there simply doesn't want to be found by us. It could be that, like anthropologists on Earth, they have a strict non-interference policy. They could be waiting until we shape up our act here on Earth. Or maybe we have to venture out into the stars on our own to find them. The possibilities for speculation are endless, but speculation will not get us very far. Until we find life or civilizations in the stars, our questions cannot be answered. With all of our speculation, though, it's important to keep in mind a quote from renowned author and physicist Sir Arthur C. Clarke, taken from the introduction of his book 2001 A Space Odyssey, a novel about extraterrestrial life. He says, Here is one possible answer to that question, but please remember, the truth, as always, will be far stranger.